Welcome everybody to today's TNT. It's Tuesday and it was this day, August the 8th, last year, where we did our very first uh, Tim Newton Today, which has sort of come to be known as TNT. I really did it at the time thinking, well, I suppose I'll give this a go. I was starting with zero, absolutely zero subscribers. I had no idea what was going to happen. And as I've said before, a big thank you to Pete from Tyrish Times and a few other people who were kind enough to interview me in those very early days that gave the channel a bit of a kickstart. And it was looming, uh, well, a couple of months ago to the possibility that I might be able to score, well, 25,000 subscribers by the end of the first year. Well, we didn't quite reach that target. We got to 24,736. Uh, there's probably another 100 or so since, uh, since that was updated. But, uh, well, we didn't quite make it. Well, we'll see what happens by the end of today. But it doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, if you've subscribed, you've supported us. If you've watched us and uh, made a few comments, you've supported us. And I'm very grateful for that support. I'll continue to try and uh, do a good show as I move my, uh, my residence up to the Pangna province away from Phuket. I'm, I imagine the show is probably going to just morph and change it, but I certainly would like to do, uh, if not daily, maybe relatively regularly, a new segment called Life's a Beach. Uh, because I've always wanted to live on the beach, and now at the tender age of 64, I'll be able to sit on the beach and, uh, well, at least look over the beach every day and ponder what I'm doing. And I will continue to do this TNT program unless something happens. Uh, anyway, that's uh, enough for that. Uh, we do have some political news to report. Looks like we do have a bit of a looming new coalition. We'll report that later on TNT. But we will get started today with a follow-up from the story yesterday on the arrest of the Spanish man for the murder of the 44-year-old Colombian. This happened on the Gulf Island of Copang An, and this is from the Partianews.com. Update dismembered body parts confirmed to be Colombian man killed by Spanish partner. And the release of the DNA analysis show that the body parts belong to Mr. Artiaga, a 44-year-old Colombian gender reassignment surgeon who was going on a trip to Panga Island with his Spanish partner, Mr. Broncello, who was aged 29. Mr. Daniel admitted to allegedly murdering and separating his lover's body, claiming Mr. Edwin tried to forcefully have sex with him. The police said the suspect had planned the incident meticulously, having invited his partner to meet at the island and brought the right tools to dismember the body. Additionally, the police revealed that Mr Daniel had previously visited the island once. He also used Mr Edwin's credit card and his money to invest in opening a restaurant in Spain. Apart from the alleged dispute over jealousy, the motive might also have been motivated from financial issues and a search for the victim's remaining body parts that the suspect ditched in the sea is underway. And then in a rather grisly sentence, this brings the total found body parts to eight out of the total 14, leaving six parts still missing, as claimed by the suspect. The story also covered in Euro News, son of Spanish actor admits to killing and dismembering friend in Thailand. And uh, he admitted it, says the Kopangan police. The investigation is ongoing. He said the victim and the suspect knew each other before they came to Thailand and his dubious activities indicate that he might murder the victim. And the police said DNA tests of the remains proved them to be of Ariata adding they have other evidence against Sancho without going into what that evidence is. So the story making its way around the world, not a good look for Kopangan, uh, otherwise known very well, of course, for its full moon party. That investigation continues. Let's go on to our next story today and another update, and this covered in the PhuketExpress.com. Boat releasing oil into Phuket Sea to face legal action. So this is uh, the oil spill that happened on the weekend, washing up the oil, which has sort of turned into these globules, these sort of plasticky, sticky, gooey globules of uh, what we call tar balls. And the Phuket Marine Office Chief told the Phuket Express they've been able to ascertain that the source of oil was a boat. 
I think we sort of already knew that. Anyone releasing oil into the sea can be imprisoned for up to three years or fined up to 60,000 baht or both. They must also pay the cost of cleaning up the damage and noting that most of that has been done very kindly, as happens every single time, by mostly volunteers who have been uh, putting on their gloves, grabbing a plastic bag and just going along the beach and picking up this rubbish and also disposing of it. And here's some footage shot by Mr Steve Ross up at Time Mung Beach and uh, he walked along the beach and noted these horrible black patches which are these uh, oil slicks turning into tar balls. Somehow the, uh, I don't know, the action of the salt water and the surf uh, sort of rolls them all into these blobs that just deposit themselves on the beach and they don't go anywhere unless somebody comes along and actually uh, removes them. But uh, Steve was doing his daily walk along the Tai Mung Beach, which is up in Pang Na, not on Phuket. And notable that, how big is it? Well, let's see if Steve puts his hand in the shot. We'll be able to get an idea of how big these uh, blobs of uh, tar and oil are. There he is picking up a stick. Not sure if that's a good idea, Steve. And you can see that it's uh, got a very sticky, gooey consistency. And as it sits there and bakes for a couple of days, it ends up getting even more sort of uh, well, sort of hard on the outside, gooey on the inside. And it's not good. Yeah, well, good on you, Steve. You've got some of that on your finger. And uh, don't try and lick it off. So that there footage from uh, Mr. Steve Ross, of course, my partner on the Grumpy Old Men program. And thank you, Steve, for letting me uh, pinch that from your Facebook page. So uh, the story goes on, and this is reported in BangkokPost.com. Search on for source of Phuket oil slicks. And the deputy director of the Marine Department said authorities believe the slicks were bunker fuel used by marine vessels. Now, I'm not exactly sure what bunker fuel is. Is that the oil that's being carried from one place to another? Or is it the fuel used by the ship? Anyway, they're calling it bunker fuel. And out of four beaches affected by the slicks, Maikau Beach was the most severely affected, noting that the slicks affected a 10 square kilometre area. If you look at uh, Maikau Beach, it's not particularly wide, so the 10 square kilometre area is a lot of beach. So I thought I'd just have a quick look at the map. Uh, that there is the island of Phuket, and of course it's uh, just got a 300 metre bridge connecting it to the mainland of Thailand. And the concentration of a lot of the oil up there on the north around the Maikau Beach, but also uh, as far down as Nihan Beach down the bottom there. We had one of our viewers contact me yesterday saying that they'd been down to Nihan Beach and they were picking up the tar balls down there as well, also Patong Beach. So it's literally, as we go back to that map, the coast all the way from the bottom of Phuket up there to uh, Tai Mung Beach, which is in Pang A. And I don't know, that's probably some 60, 70 kilometres of beach, and it might even go further north, or indeed it could go further south of Phuket to other Andaman coast beaches. So certainly somewhat of an environmental disaster down here in Phuket, putting a lot of people off from uh, swimming on those beaches. And again, thank you to those volunteers that have been combing the beaches from one end to the other. And there's a lot of beaches along that west coast of Phuket and up into Pang A. Uh, so thank you to them for their time and uh, just walking along the beach from one end to another, picking up that goo putting it in plastic bags and uh, getting rid of it. This is TNT. It's our Tuesday TNT program. Bit of a wet old day down here in Phuket. I think uh, the weather reports have been saying there's uh, rain expected in all sorts of parts of Thailand. I know up in the Isan area it's certainly been raining quite a lot over the past week. Seems to have arrived in a lot of other parts over recent days. Now this next story is probably much bigger than we can really comment about, but uh, I'll just report it as is. And from Coconuts, Bangkok, the second son of King Rama X returns to Thailand. 
And I reported yesterday on this very YouTube channel about the arrival of this gentleman on Sunday night in our community section where we do our breaking news, saying that the second son of His Majesty the King, 42-year-old Vasharasorn, arrived last night at Bangkok Airport after living in voluntary exile following a palace purge decades ago. Vasharasorn is a successful US-educated lawyer. The succession of the Thai royal family has been in question after His Majesty's eldest daughter, the 44-year-old princess, fell into a coma in December last year. But uh, moving on to the uh, coconut story, it says that Vasharasorn, a son of His Royal Highness King Vashira Longkorn, who's been living in New York, reportedly returned to Thailand on Sunday night. And a viral video is making the rounds on Thai Twitter, sorry that's Thai X now, in which Vasharasorn, or Orn, the second son of Rama Ten, and uh, his second wife, can be seen greeting people as he arrived at Sawanapum Airport. And here's that uh, video from X showing uh, his arrival at Sawanapum Airport on Sunday night. Uh, really quite unassuming, dressed casually, doesn't seem to have uh, a lot of visible security, coming to say hello to photographers, and quite unassuming, just uh, making his way, I suppose, to uh, to immigration after arriving at Sawanapum Airport. A bit more information. Vasharasorn has lived in de facto exile in the United States for several years, where he worked as a lawyer for Manny Gordon in Tampa, Florida. In 1997, the Thai embassy notified the United Kingdom, where Vasharasorn and other family members resided at the time, that their royal status had been revoked. And he's been involved in various royal activities, including education initiatives for Thai students abroad, and also established the Thai Heritage Scholarship Fund of New York to support Thai students in New York and strengthen their connection to their homeland. So what's this all about and why is it important? Well, there's not really very much that I can say beyond what I've already reported. Uh, suffice to say that if you've watched this program over the years, especially our reporting about the incident last December with His Majesty's eldest daughter, you're probably able to put two and two together and figure out what's going on. But uh, indeed, I think we'll be hearing a lot more about this gentleman and uh, we wish him well for his trip here in Thailand, a trip back after so many years. Moving on to a bit of political news now, and I should say that the previous story has got nothing to do with the political situation unfolding in Thailand, but uh, Khao Sod English reports that Populist Party and member of outgoing administration will try to form Thailand's next government. So this is now uh, talking about a new coalition, the old coalition, well that's very last year's. We've now got a new coalition forming, with Per Thai going buddy-buddy with a former foe. And Thailand's populist Per Thai Party announced yesterday that it will form a coalition with a party from the outgoing military-backed administration to try and end nearly three months of political deadlock after the progressive party that won national elections was excluded from the formation of a new government. And the Per Thai Party yesterday said it will try and form a government with the Pum Jai Thai Party, which finished third in the election with 71 seats in the lower house, Together with Per Thai's 141 seats, the two parties hold 212 seats. Of course, they'll need uh, at least 251 to have a majority and uh, therefore able to pass legislation. So a few more seats to go, a few more friends, maybe a few more brown paper bags. And the Pumjai Thai leader Anatan Shavidakun serves as Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Public Health in Prayut Administration. Nanderson's most prominent legacy as health minister was removing marijuana from the country's narcotics lists, leading to an explosion of shops selling cannabis around the country. And Anderton said at a news conference with Per Thai yesterday that Pumjai Thai has agreed to join the coalition under the conditions that the Royal Defamation Law will not be amended, that's the Les Majeste Law, and that Move Forward will not be part of the government. And Tolanan, the Per Thai leader, said the two parties will invite other parties this week to join them in forming a government. I think they'll probably get, uh, well, maybe the Democrats or other people who were in that original eight-party coalition. 
And he said, uh, we need support from all sides because the problems that the country and the people are facing right now are severe. And of course, you could probably blame people who are in power over the past eight years, uh, people like Pum Jai Tai, who are in that former government for that situation. And the longer the delay is, the more damage it will cause. And Tolman said a Per Thai Party-led government will propose a new draft constitution because the current charter enacted after the 2014 military coup is the main factor causing the current political crisis and a reason why the coalition with Move Forward failed. And then, uh, although Pum Jai Tai and Per Thai were on opposite sides of the political divide during the last government, Anaton said he never said the two parties could not work together and called for a compromise. That story from KalsodEnglish.com and uh, very well reported. And uh, just to follow up from NationThailand.com, Pum Jai Tai comes on board to form government as Per Thai accepts its conditions. And uh, just down the bottom there, because uh, most of that uh, information I just read from the Cowslot English story was also included in the Nation Thailand story. Uh, but this, as for the party's promise on holding a referendum for a new constitution, Chol Nan said it would take about two years. So if there is a new constitution and a referendum in about two years, there'd be an election straight away. And, uh, well, that means we could have a new government again in around about two years' time. But, of course, that's a long way away at the moment. And reporting from ThaiPBSWorld.com, next vote on new Thai PM could be on August the 18th or the 19th. And a joint sitting of Parliament is expected to convene on either August the 18th or 19th after the Constitutional Court rules on whether it will consider a petition regarding the renomination of Move Forward Party leader for Prime Minister and whether to order the suspension of the process to select a Prime Minister. So the Constitutional Court will hand down its uh, findings on that petition to allow Peter to perhaps have another go at being nominated as Prime Minister. So all this work between Per Thai and anybody else could all be up in the air as the Constitutional Court ponder what they're going to do with that petition. So uh, there's plenty more to happen, uh, still a moving feast, but I'll do my best to try and uh, we'll keep it as simple as we can and wade through the entrails here on TNT. And uh, with that, I thank you very much for watching today, our, I suppose, our anniversary program. I don't think we'll be doing anything anything in particular. Might open a soda water on grumpy old men with Steve or something. I don't know. We'll figure something out. Otherwise, there's still plenty of news to talk about. Hope you have a fantastic Tuesday. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.